Welcome to this online lesson looking at one particularly important character in Norman England, Bishop Odo. I've called this lesson Odo He Didn't and Odo He Did. That won't be the only terrible Odo pun that you get in this lesson, so strap in for that. The aim is to assess the significance of Bishop Odo of Bayeux as a Norman character. Bishop Odo is the man under the arrow with a club at the Battle of Hastings. He didn't have a sword because as a churchman he didn't want to shed blood. Bashing skulls in was fine though. What does this tell you about Bishop Odo? Well, it probably tells you that he was quite warlike, although it should be pointed out that this is only one interpretation of Bishop Odo's club at this time. It's also possible that it's just a mace, which is a symbol of his office. Well, whatever the truth, he's an important character in Norman history right from the time before the Battle of Hastings and throughout William's reign, and even after it. First, some key words and terms. Cloak's compendium of annoying old-fashioned words that you need to know today includes Aristocracy, a system of rule where rulers are from wealthy families. And aristocrat, a wealthy ruler or posh person. Not to be spelt aristocat. Your task then, give your own definition for the key words, and what might be the advantages of rule by the aristocracy in Norman times. Finally, in what ways might aristocracy be unfair? Pause the video now and complete the tasks. Okay, the advantages of aristocracy for the Normans were that it allowed William to rule the country using loyal, royal, um, noble families. So, ruling by the wealthy was done by really wealth in terms of land. And remember, William was the person who shared out all the land ownership. In terms of how an aristocracy might be unfair then, is the land was not dished out equally. It was given to certain families in abundance, while other, many, many other people had absolutely nothing. This was an example of William taking control of the country and keeping the Saxons who might otherwise rebel under what was often referred to as the Norman yoke or Norman control. As a final challenge then, is modern Britain an aristocracy? Give that some thought as well. To be honest with you, it's one of those questions where you could go either way, and I'm sure that arguments could be made for either way. So rather than getting into my own opinions, let's move on. So where might you have heard the name of Bishop Odo before? Well, we have come across Odo at other times in our stories of the Normans, so we should have heard of him. He was made one of William's regents after all. So what sort of responsibilities would Odo have had as regent? Pause the video while you note down some ideas. Remember that a regent effectively ruled the country on behalf of the king. William spent about 80% of his reign in Normandy, and so appointed a variety of regents to command. Remember the regent Bishop Lanfranc, who was in charge of uh, England at the time of the Revolt of the Earls, and was instrumental in putting it down. Well, Odo would also have had uh, important responsibilities in terms of uh, keeping land ownership um, operating, uh, keeping taxation coming in, and making sure that the army was led in England. So Bishop Odo of Bayeux had a very interesting and distinctive career. It is un undoubted that Bishop Odo was very impor important to King William and the Norman society in general. However, like a roller coaster, there were times when his significance was up and there were times when his significance was down. We could call it an Odo coaster, if you like. Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, let's have a look at how an Odo coaster might work. We're going to create something now called a living graph. On this, you've got two scales. The bottom scale, or x-axis, is a timeline. For Bishop Odo, this runs from about 1045 all the way up to about 1090. So that's what scale you should use. Then on the other side, we've got a more um, a sort of interpretive um, uh, scale, which is his level of significance. Where low down on that scale, it means he hasn't got much significance at all. And high up on that scale, it would mean he's got power that rivals even the king. Although I would say that Odo's power should never get quite that high. So what I need you to do now is use an A4 piece of paper or similar, or a piece of graph paper if you have it, to create a graph of your own with these scales. So you can pause the video now while you prepare your Odo Coaster graph. Okay, once you've done that, we're going to have a look at some events of Odo's life. There are going to be six in total and you will need to plot them on your graph. By the end, it should look something like this. So you plot the events in line with the, uh, the timeline and then in line with your interpretation as to how significant that made Odo. 
But before you do, don't think that the line I've just plotted on here is anything like the line that you will end up with. That just shows how a living graph works. You plot the events in time order or chronological order, and it goes higher up the graph the more significant Odo is at any particular point during his life. Right, that's the basics dealt with. Now let's have a look at the examples. What you'll need to do is to write down the examples on your graph next to these important points. Or if you don't have space, just label them event 1, event 2 and so far forth and write the, uh, the actual events in more detail on the back of the piece of paper or on a separate sheet. Here are the events then. Duke William made Bishop Od um, Odo Bishop of Bayeux in around 1050. Odo organised and paid for a number of ships for the invasion of England in 1066. He then took part in the Battle of Hastings. In the immediate years after the Battle of Hastings, Odo was given a lot of land. He became the second richest and most powerful man after King William. He was made Earl of Kent and in 1067 helped def defend Kent against an invasion. He was often made a regent on alongside Lanfranc. In 1075, Odo led the King's army to stop the revolt of the Earls. He also led an army that devastated the North as punishment for the murder of a Norman Archb Archbishop. In 1082, Odo ignored William's commands and led an army to Italy when Odo's army was needed in England. You can imagine this did not make William at all happy. And finally, in 1088, which is after the death of William the Conqueror, Odo attempted a rebellion against the new king, William Rufus, or William II. His plan failed and he was kicked out of England and the royal family. He died on his way to Jerusalem on a crusade. So, read those events, plot them on the, the, your graph where you think you know, that they should go, and see if you can explain some of your choices. Pause the video now so that you can do that. Okay, so let's have a look at an example of how your graph might look. This is how I would plot my events. Okay, I've not done this exactly, but I want to give a sense of the sort of trends that you may well have identified too. You should really be identifying that Bishop Odo has a reasonably gradual increase in his power until he reaches great heights when he becomes the most, second most powerful man in England. But then, after he disobeys William's orders and then fights against the King of England, his significance drops off really quickly and very dramatically. And that accounts for the steep de uh, decline that we see at the end of the timeline. Can you see how this actually resembles a roller coaster? It's where the idea of the Odo coaster comes from and hopefully it'll help you remember it. Or another way of putting it is as Odo's career went something like this. Odo! Oh, and then he lost everything at the end. Odo. Oh, yeah, I know. The puns are dreadful. But if it helps you remember, it will all have been worthwhile. So compare this to your graph. Does it show a broadly similar trend? If not, have a think about why and whether you can justify that. We're now going to apply our knowledge of Bishop Odo's life that we can get from our Odo coasters to an exam style question. It's an analysis question worth 12 marks. Explain how the significance of Bishop Odo to Kings William I and William II changed between 1066 and 1088. You may use the following in your answer. Odo's role as regent. Odo's rebellion against King uh, William Rufus. Use your Odo coaster to answer this question, and you should lay it out like this. You need three point example explain and link paragraphs. This is where you make a point about how significant Odo was at a given time, give an example of what he did, explain how that made him important to the king, and then link it back to the question. Explain whether this shows his importance had increased or decreased, or indeed stayed the same as before. You can judge this by the trends on your Odo coaster graph. Then you need to conclude, what was Odo's main significance? Remember that for this style of question there are 12 marks, therefore there are 6 marks for your knowledge and 6 marks for your analysis. So without those linked sentences explaining how his significance increased or decreased, you're not going to get those full marks. You should spend between about 15 and 18 minutes on a question of this length. With that in mind, you can pause the video now and attempt your answer. Afterwards, we'll have a look at an example. Pause now. All right, how did you get on? Let's have a look at an example. Explain how the significance of Bishop Odo to Kings William I and William II changed between 1066 and 1088. 12 marks. Here, parts of my answer are highlighted in different colours, so that you can see where I've made my points, given examples, explanations and extra detail, and those all too crucial links. So have a look at the purple sections in particular. Those are the bits that people often miss. 
One time when Odo was significant to King William I was during the Norman Conquest. For example, Odo prepared and provided several ships for the invasion and participated in the Battle of Hastings in 1066. This was important to William as it helped ensure that William had sufficient men to win in 1066 and become king. This showed Odo's significance or power was increasing as he was now more than just Bishop of Bayeux. He was likely to be rewarded by the king with land and power for contributing to the conquest. Later, Odo's significance increased as he became the second most rich man in England. Odo's actions in the conquest showed that William the Conqueror could trust him and Odo was made Earl of Kent. This was important to the king as Odo was able to rule as regent with Lanfranc and defeat threats to William's rule such as the revolt of the earls in 1075. This shows an increase in, in Odo's power as along with Lanfranc being regent was only second in power to the king. It shows how much William I trusted Odo. Finally, by the end of Odo's life, his significance to the king had decreased substantially. When William I died, Odo decided to rebel against the new king of England, England, William Rufus. This shows that Odo was still ambitious and felt that he could still influence who ruled in the, in the country. However, this did not work and it showed Odo's significance decreasing. As the rebellion failed, William Rufus exiled Odo out of England and he would no longer be able to serve the king. His significance to the king by this point was virtually non-existent. In a moment, I'm going to show you my conclusion. Now, I've got two options here. I can even choose the most important example of Odo's significance, or I could choose to go for a trend over time. In fact, I'm going to show you both versions and you can decide which one you prefer. Let's first of all have a look at the style of conclusion that basically explains which development was most important. Overall, Odo's main significance was how he supported William's invasion in 1066. For example, without this contribution, it is unlikely that Odo would have become so significant. This means it is also unlikely that Odo would have ever been made regent. This contribution to William's invasion shows the biggest increase in Odo's significance to William as it led to William's later trust in Odo and the rewards he was given. Or we could have a look at it from a more thematic approach. Overall, Odo's significance increased gradually, then declined suddenly. Odo gradually increased his significance with every promotion he got, from being made Bishop of Bayer to being made co-regent. That said, after Odo disobeyed William's orders and then rebelled against William II, he was exiled. As a result, Odo's significance dramatically declined for before his death, despite a steady rise in his significance throughout much of his life after becoming Bishop of Bayer. Consider which of those conclusions you prefer. From my point of view as a teacher, if I was marking this, I'd be more impressed by the second. It shows a better idea of grasping the overall themes and the big picture of Odo's life. However, if you're wanting to really secure some AO2 marks, and uh, a good way of doing it is also the, uh, part one. So do whichever you're more confident with, but realise that the second style of conclusion does show your overall grasp of a more developed um, opinion about Odo. It's also more challenging and therefore carries more risks, but sometimes risks favour the brave as Odo discovered when he took part in that invasion of 1066. We'll conclude by checking our knowledge on Odo. I call this task Odo he didn't and Odo he did. Decide which of these statements are things that Odo did and which of these statements are things that he didn't do. Odo supplied all of the ships for William's invasion. Odo supplied some of the ships for William's invasion. Odo fought with a club at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Odo was made Bishop of Bayer in about 1050. Odo helped stop the revolt of the Earls in 1075. Odo was made Earl of Essex and Odo died on his way to the Holy Land. Pause the video now and decide whether Odo he did or Odo he didn't for each of those statements. Let's check out some answers. Odo supplied all of the ships of William's invasion. Odo he didn't. Because Odo supplied some ships of William's invasion, Odo he did. Odo fought with a club at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. He didn't. It was Hastings. Odo was made Bishop of Bayer in about 1050. Odo he did. Odo helped stop the revolt of the Earls in 1075. Odo he did. Odo was made Earl of Essex. Odo he didn't. He was made Earl of Kent. Odo died on his way to the Holy Land. Odo he did. Unfortunate for him. And that's where our lesson concludes. I'll say thank you very much for watching, I hope it's been useful, and if it has, please like this video. And if you didn't like the puns, uh, please don't dislike this video, it hurts my feelings, really it does. So, until next time, I'll say goodbye.